Cause Nick and Mike's top 100 games But does anyone care what they have to say? Please. I know I don't Cause they may doubt, they may scream They may say some things that are plain wrong Dab on it, dab on it But they are dumb, dumb bing-bongs Matthew Juice better <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Nick Murphy. I'm Mike Murphy. And we are the Brothers Murph, and this is the continuation of our top 100, and now we are in the top 50 games so officially. Exciting. Officially, it's very, very exciting. These are the good games. All the other games were garbage. These are great. I know. So, all we need to say is what we've always been saying. Just we're two different people, two first different of all. People. We're not one person. I'm Mike most of the time. I think he's I'm Nick. usually Nick. Second of all... Uh, this is just our list. It's our opinion. It's very subjective. But the one thing that is not subjective, it is objective, is the fact that we are are not bot. Yes. Objectively, whatever Nick said was spoken. <laughs> that is that is on record now. We're not bot, Mike. Because what mm -hmm. I'm getting at is that we're our own people. We ain't bot, dude. We, we ain't, ain't bot, bot over here. We're straight up independent. So... I'm not going to see a bunch of, like, clearly just chosen for monetary interest. On the comments, everyone's like, oh, gosh, we're so bot. We're not, okay? Gosh. Oh, God. We just like to volunteer a lot. Jeez. Um, okay, so going to our top 50, let's start it off with number 50. Yay! I forgot to film number 50. <laughs> I also forgot another one, which you'll see in a later video. Fantastic. Nick, do you know who I love? Who? I love Jack Burton. Who? Cool. Jack Burton, me. Jack Burton is the greatest character ever made. Jack Burton is the greatest character ever committed to cinema. It's he's just he's just such a treasure. Kurt yes. Russell should be in the Hall of Fame of humans if that's the thing. Yeah. All right. And I just want people to know like how important this character is. Okay. And I want them to subscribe to to his life so, philosophy. So what you're saying is that number fifty is brought to you by Jack Burton? I think I think all of it is technically brought to you by it's Jack. It's brought Burton. to you by Jack Burton. Yes, uh, and specifically the 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 idea in life that if you have all the swagger and confidence in the world, it doesn't matter if you have zero of the skills. Yeah. That's all that matters. How we get through life? Just be Jack Burton. Jack Burton, and all will work out just fine. Jack Burton, we love you. Thank you. Love you. Fifty. Do it. On that note, my number fifty is Raiders of the North Sea. All right, oh, okay. you see how that connects to. Chinatown? Yep. In San Francisco? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Raiders of the North Sea is a fantastic worker placement game. Kind of with a twist in that you're putting down a yeah. worker to activate a location, but then you're also picking up a worker from the board to activate another location. So you're always doing kind of two things in one, which is super cool. Place a worker, get a worker. There's different color workers, which are going to be important for going to certain spots. Yeah. They might need a white worker or the gray. Or uh, the kind of lower normal spaces are any worker can go to. Yeah. So there's this idea of like putting down workers, picking up the right things, but that might be the thing that Nick wants, you know what I mean? And trying to block spaces. So it's just really fun and light, easy worker placement game with that little twist where you're ultimately just trying to go and raid and get materials to turn yep. them in and get points and Pretty stuff. Much. Just being a Viking and whatnot. Yeah, I like it a lot. I like yeah, it a lot. It's, I'm anxious to try the... We got... Our friend has it, uh, mm -hmm. Crookie, and we got him the Hall, Hall of Heroes expansion. Yes. I really want to try it because I, I really like the game a lot, but I think it's going to go up even more with that expansion. Me too, yeah. It's just super fun. I really want to get it. Love the art style of all those games. Um, and just Raiders of North Sea is just like really really fun yeah and one we need to pick up for ourselves in the meantime we have access to it pretty much whenever but i'm just like oh i really like that with each play i really yeah really enjoy it totally. and i really want to try that expansion so that's my number 50 totally i'm double checking something i believe number 50 let me see double crossover let me see. no 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 no. Oh. um i said there's north sea earlier uh is your hater my number 50, I was checking to see if it is my favorite roll and write, and it is my favorite roll and write. My number 50 is Railroad Inc. Okay. Railroad Inc. by Simon. Uh, it's a great little roll and write. It's a proper roll and write where you're rolling out dice. Um, but it is a game where it's a very basic, generic board game theme because board gamers love trains for some reason. Sure. Um, so, like, it's about just building the network of trains and highways. And that's all it is. So you yeah. roll these four dice, and these dice have little a straight train track. Yeah, they have like a train track, like a train track on a straight or like a highway on a straight or a train track on a curve or a train track on a T or something like that. And they're all equal amounts of train tracks and highways. And then one die has a bunch of uh, specialty stuff. And a lot of it, what it is, is you can turn a highway into a train track and you have a, uh, what is seven by seven grid? Uh, yeah. A seven by seven grid. And you're essentially trying to make a big network of 
railways and highways. And it's pretty again, pretty generic, kind of boring theme, but like like a lot of rolling rides, you just you're at mercy of what is rolled. Yeah. And man oh man, you just have to make it work. And you're constantly just putting stuff all over your network and trying to connect puzzle. things. Cause the more um exits that your uh network is connected to the more points it's going to be worth. Yep. So you're trying to get it to these specific spots on the board, and it's just like a game. T- game takes place over seven rounds. Each round you're rolling out these four dice. So when you get to round six and seven, you're starting to need like super specific stuff. You're like, <laughs> I need, I need a railroad on a T. I need a curve highway. I need a railroad that turns into a highway, but I need that one to be on a curve. And then I need, you know, it's just, and of course you never get it. So you're constantly having to adapt and change what you're doing and trying to make it work. And it's just delightful. It's our go-to. Like, hey, we're going to Denny's. We want to bring a game to play. Let's grab Railroad Inc. Uh, the game itself comes in two versions, blue and red. They're ultimately, for the most part, pretty much the same. Um, but it's just great. It's great. Another game that we play on stream a lot. We like to play um, Roll and Rights on, on our Twitch stream fairly often. Because everyone can play from home. And so everyone can play from home. Because you can just like, essentially print out the sheet. And it's great. And it's, it's a blast. And I just Railroad Inc. is... I think it's even going to go higher, honestly. I, yeah. I really think it's going to go high. I really yeah. love the game a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. That is my number 50, Railroad Inc. Bam. So that was our number 50. Let's get on number 49. 49. 49. My number 49 is a game that I adore and a game that like I want to get more and more of, but it's just so, there's so many expansions and there's so many, God, it's so expensive. And that is Lord of the Rings, the card game. Oh. I love Lord of the Rings, the card game. I love Lord of the Rings. So does it. Barely cracks the top 50. It's because we don't play it that much. It really is. And the main reason is because we just don't have very many expansions. We're kind of, we've done what we can do. Name two mountains in Middle Earth. <laughs> the Misty Mountains and the Blue Mountains. All right. Yeah, I could go with something else, but I didn't. Um, but no, and so... I don't even know the name of Mount Doom, just saying. <laughs> I'm not a, not a fan. No, I just... I, I I want to play this game more. It's just we don't have really... We have, like, the base game and some of the experiences. We have not the time nor the money. <laughs> that's the problem is we keep wanting to yeah. play it, like, in order and stuff. And then, and then like, but they're out of print. And they come back into print. They immediately go, like, out of print again. And it's just expensive. Each time we're like, oh, it's back in print. We're like, ah, we don't have, like... 30, 40 bucks for this expansion. And it's but it's one of those games I know eventually we're going to get everything for, despite how much money it is. I know it's just going to happen. And I want to keep playing it, and I love it, because I love your... It's essentially the different scenarios you have, and it's a deck-building game, but deck-constructing game, where you're building the game before... You're building your deck beforehand, kind of like Magic, and then just drawing from it. Yeah. But it's a cooperative game. Arkham Horror, the card game, the living card game, is kind of like this, but like a bit revamped and a bit changed, but it's based off this system... But I like Lord of the Rings, so I have no interest in the Arkham Horror game. Um, and I love Lord of the Rings card game. Can't wait to play it more. Just uh, we need money, and it's expensive. You know, <laughs> just that whole that's that only thing. But it's great, and I love it. Lord of the Rings is a card game. Anything Lord of the Rings is good in my book, with except for the Hobbit movies. Um, and yeah, yep, I said it. But they're okay. No, they're not. The first one's okay. First one's all. The first one's decent, pretty darn decent. But I know. Nope. I still watch them in a pinch. Oh. I had to. Sure wouldn't. <laughs> maybe, maybe can get, maybe can get talked in the first one. That's it. All right. That's fair, it. Fair, fair, fair. Mikey, number forty nine. Hit us. My number forty nine has been mentioned by you before. Uh, when it is? I mean, you know, at some point. When? I mean, I don't know. Okay. It is a real time game, uh, all about running a kitchen. Mm. It is Kitchen Rush. I love My kitchen rush. number forty nine. It's so fun. It's, it's so great. stressful. I just love the chaos and the and it really does make me feel like a, what a busy restaurant kitchen would. Yeah, be. Yeah, we've never worked in kitchens, but I'm like, I feel like this is accurate. Where you just you got to move as quick as you can, be as efficient with your time as you can, and this guy's got to help you with Where's that thing the over there. Sauce? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get the curry on. <laughs> you know, uh, and I just, I just love it. It's like a little worker placement game that's cooperative, which yeah. you mentioned is like. You don't ever see. It's very and rare, this yeah. is kind of a way that it does really work. I feel like having these spaces. And maybe he's like, I need you to get out of the oven. You got to get out of the oven, Nick. I need you out of the oven. I got to get in the oven. Can you get out of the oven? Nick, please make everything. I need to get in that oven. But it's still cooperative, right? And you're trying to maximize these four, four minute periods that you have. Yeah. And in between, you can talk about strategy, talk about what you need to do, but you only have 16 minutes you're to really get playing, a lot of stuff You're done. playing the game for a very short amount of time, ultimately. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the actual doing stuff to play the game. That's what's really cool to me. Yeah. It's like you have all this stuff going on and then 
but it's going to be ultimately a pretty quick game because of mm -hmm. the real time nature of it. Um, think of this: the entire game is one time second of Millennium Blades. That's true. One time segment of Millennium Blades. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. And there's that. So you can get kind of that real time craziness in a much shorter amount of time than you would take to play Millennium Blades. So which is also a good game. Um, which is also a good game. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's just my my number forty nine. It's just fun and interesting and chaotic. Uh, I like the look of it and stuff. I like the little the little wooden um, ingredients and things like that. Kitchen Rush, my 49. Love it. Love it. Great game. I think it's going to climb for me personally. Love yeah. it. Love it. All right, that's 49. Let's do 48. Let's do it. Punk. 48. 48. Alright, so my number 48 is another game that's been mentioned by Nick. It is a game that is very important to uh, us getting here as board gamers. For us, like, turning the corner from, like, oh, we have a couple of games oh, okay. to like, really delving into the world. And this is the definitive version, the version, the only one that we have left at this point is Zombicide Black Plague. Oh. Uh, so this game hmm. um, is just a huge, big mini, Simon to the max. Yeah. A bunch of extra stuff we got on Kickstarter back in the day, and just uh, once in a while, it's fun to like put out a huge map. Oh yeah, chuck some dice, uh, and just like slay zombies and yeah. stuff, and like power up and get like cool slay weapons, out. and just like have double swords and you're just like slicing and dicing. It's very satisfying. Yeah, in that co-op way, and you're just trying to trying to achieve one mission or another depending on whatever the scenario is. Uh, and I just, I don't know, I just. It, we don't play it very much anymore it's just because big, yeah. of, it, it takes a while, but it is really fun sometimes to like, we yeah. played epic games, five hour games of zombie size, huge games, you know? Uh, and they're just really fun. So once in a while, it's just fun to bust it out yeah. and like get down. Oh, yeah. And with the app that they have now that helps you manage the cards and everything, you can even roll your dice in there if you mm -hmm. want. It takes a lot of the fiddliness and a lot of the upkeep and makes it very easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you just have, like, the board and you have minis on the board and you just get to, to handle all that business. And if you want to chuck real-life dice, go for it. If not, just use the app for everything but the board. It's awesome. So, yeah, Zombie Side Black Plague. Um, that was just, like, that kind of, like, we saw more of, like, the world and, like, what board games can be based on, like, Zombie yeah, Side. totally, you know? totally. So that got us, you know, into the whole, like, that's what introduced you, I think, kind of to like really the world of like Kickstarter board games. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really opened up a lot of things. So we have to be really thankful to Zombie Side yeah. for it's what it's helping us get with here. the the deep dive. That's where that's where it started. Happened. That's where it yeah. started. Yeah. All righty, my number 48 is actually another Simon game. Hmm. Another big minis game. And again, I I if it hasn't been on your list yet, I don't think it's going to be on your list. But this is a game uh, called Rum and Bones. Oh, um, Rum and Bones is a uh, skirmish two, uh, two player game. You can play it more than two, but I'm just like, nah, I'm afraid not. But it's a two player game where you have your two boats and it's kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean, the game. And the two boats kind of side up next to each other. And then your your heroes and your crew are just fighting out and just boom, 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 boom. And it's it's a game that I really like. It's a dice chucker. It's a game that dice can super go badly, which can sometimes be like, oh, man. But um. We just recently finally got the upgrade pack because uh, Simon, for some reason, <laughs> for, for some reason, Simon like refuses to sell the upgrade pack because we have season one, the first one, and like you can get second tide where they changed a lot of the rules and upgraded the game and made it a lot better, a lot better. But like they, that was for the season two, and they're like, oh, we have this upgrade pack, which means you can upgrade your old uh, rum and bones to make it up, you know, update for the new ones, yeah. And we're like, great. But the problem is with the Kickstarter, you couldn't just buy the upgrade pack. Because we're like, we don't need more rum and bones. We just want the upgrade pack. Yeah. And like, don't worry, it'll be available at retail. We're like, okay, cool. But then they just never made available at retail. And at this point, as far as I've heard, they're like, yeah, we're just never going to make it. Despite the fact that they promised to. Yeah. So when we were at Gen Con, we were at the Simon booth. And mm -hmm. they had them there. And so we snatched one up. We finally got it. And that's what put it back on the list. It probably would have been off the list yeah. if we hadn't had that upgrade pack. Because I it makes the game so much better. But it's great. And, Mike, here's the thing. Like, I love uh, Rum and Bones to death. But you know who really loves it? Bill Nye, the science guy. No, the Dutch. The, the Dutch, Dutch, they, they love, love Rum and Bones. They, they do. They love Rum and Bones. You know who loves it more than anyone else? Who? Goose. 
Goose? Goose. The, the, the be- members of Goose? The members of Goose from the Dutch band. Okay. And this is their, their debut album, uh, Morgan. And it's great, Mike. This is such a good album. This was introduced to us by Dave Luza. He gave us this. Uh, Goose is, um, it's not about geese, surprisingly. Goose does not mean geese. Okay. Uh, but it has the great hits that we all know, like Dank Jewel. And um, Ze Zizh Het Ook, obviously. Um, Classic. I mean, that one everyone sings yeah. along to. And then Groots Zinch. Great, great album. Great band. Dave Luz is a great human. Overall, um, despite just, a really successful podcast called This Game is Broken. Indeed, indeed. And we're just big fans of the Dutch people in general. They are and great. thank you so much for existing, Goose. And thank you for giving us just fantastic, whimsical music to listen indeed. to. Indeed. And they also love Roman Bones. I do too. Indeed. It's great. Indeed. The Dutch. Best. Wow. Lovely. Wonderful. Lovely people. Wow. Wow. Let's go to the next one, man. All right. 47. Let's do it. 47. How are we doing this one? Bring it. That's how we're doing it. All right. If you're tired, part of team, bring it. You don't think about these things. You just bring it. Before there was bring it on, there was team bring it. <laughs> Primerica. Be about it, Nick. What do you got for 47? I want you to bring it. Nick. I'm already on the team. You are. Team We're looking it. for recruits. I'll bring, it, I'll bring it right now. My number 47 is a wonderful two-player game, a two-player cooperative game called Codenames Do It! You've passed. <laughs> Codenames Do It, or Codenames Do It! Do It! As we do it. Um, Codenames Do It is a great version of Codenames. To me, it's like my by far my favorite version of Codenames. I don't mind Codenames, the general yeah. game, but Codenames Do It is by far the best way to play because it's just... It's more fun. It's more intimate. It's more like you're really trying to get into your partner's like head and be like, yeah. "How are you thinking?" But it's a two-player game where you have you know the map of cards in front of you, like in Code Names, and you have a um, whatever the sheet, the master spy sheet, and you have some words that pertain to you. The other player has some words that pertain to them, and there are some words that cross over, like mm-hmm. you know. Um, pen may be on both of our lists, but then on top of that, there's three traders. In the midst, you know, if you if you uh, guess a word and it has to be one of my assassins, boom, we lose a game. Like in a normal game of code names. But the weird thing is, is like a, a name, a word that is a traitor for me might be a word that I need to guess for yeah, you. So my mind goes like, oh no, I can't guess that because it's a traitor. I'm like, wait, no, no. But that's a traitor for me. It may not be a traitor for you. Yeah. And just and it's really, really fun. It's pretty tough, um, but it's just such a fun way to play code names where it's just you're on the same team and you're really like, yo, yo, squirrel four, come on, right here, right here. You're just like it takes that that like throwing out wild clues and trying to get stuff done like you have in code names, but just makes it again more of a fun, intimate, small uh, uh, play. And it, I, I I just love it. I, I love, love it. code names. Do it. It's yeah. by far my favorite way to play code names. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it's the point where I'm just like, yeah, the code names are like okay, but like I I don't really feel too much need. I'd rather just play code names. Do it. Indeed, I'm right there with you, man. Code names. Do it. Rips. My number 47 has been mentioned by you before on our last list. Okay. We played through the campaign of this live on stream on our Twitch channel, and it was a ton of fun. It is near and far. Does near and far bring it? Uh, near and far brought it. Near and far brought it. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, it was a really fun game. It was just really cool Ryan Lockett product where you're kind of traveling through these different maps. I love that about it. That Yeah. The game is like there's these spiral books. One has stories. Another one has maps. And you open up the, the book and... And lay it flat, and that's your map for this game. And when you're ready, you turn the page to the next map, and you're going through this journey as if you're going through the story. So it's just like a very satisfying thing, yeah. the way it lays out, and you have your map right there. Then you have town, which is sort of worker placement You kind of go around and gather supplies. So you're, you're balancing kind of going around town, trying to get recruits, and then going on adventures and questing. Yeah. And it's just, it was a ton of fun, you know? It was cool to play through something that kind of told this ongoing story. And there's characters that we encountered in the first map that came back in the last. Yeah. And so it was very satisfying. Yeah. And we played as these two characters, and we kind of built up their own stories and stuff. So it was like a really cool way to play. We played yes. with the Amber Mines expansion. Yeah. So we kind of just threw it all in and played at co-op and went through the whole thing. And it was great, man, you know? And it's just... It just kind of goes to prove the whole idea of, like, legacy games. Yeah. It's like, if you create a really great experience for people... Even if it's just kind of a one-time thing, oh, yeah, that's so that's worth it. it. Yeah, it's worth it. You know what I mean? You got a great like, story. Is it worth this price? I'm like, yes. Yeah, 100%. like yes. 100%. If you get hours and hours of entertainment, you're gonna have lasting yeah. stories and stuff. And Near and Far isn't even a legacy game, but it is a campaign game, so it might, you know, 
it has limited replayability in that regard, but like it was a great time. So why not? You know? Yeah. Great. Uh, but yeah, so that's my number 47 near and far. It was, a, it was a heck of a time. Even if we never play it again, or if it's years and years and years, uh, this was an awesome game to have. So yeah, yeah. big, big fan. Like near yeah. and far a lot. Bow. Bow. All right. That's number 47, right? Yeah, man. All right. Let's go to 46. Yeah, man. You brought it. Mike, you brought it. That's, brought that's it. why you're in that shirt. That's why the shirt's already on. That's right. That's right. It's right here. Boom. All right. Let's do 46. Forty-six. All right, dude. What are you doing? Hmm? You said some cream to my coffee. Dude, that's my neti pot. We're sponsored by neti pot. This is like the new thing. Okay, neti pot. Cool. Let's no, see. no. You understand? Like, I use this to clear out my sinuses. I pour it <laughs> in my nose. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty gross, right? Yeah, it needs a lot more cream. What? All right, Mike. Hit us with the forty-six. You horrible person. My 46 is, uh, speaking of horrible people, uh, it's a train game. What? <laughs> Only terrible people like train games. Uh, yeah, everyone knows it. Oh, um, it? it is Railways of the World. Oh, yeah. I quite like this game, man. See, it's interesting because at this point in the list, it's again, it's going to be a lot of crossover, but especially if there's very few games that like, you've played while, that just like I a... haven't played. Yeah. And like I haven't played Railways of the World, but you played like two or three times. Yeah. Like, yeah. I really like it a lot. Yeah. I've played it three times now. Yeah. Um, and I just really dig it, man. It's, yeah. it's I, I really I really didn't think want I would try it. Yeah, it's really great. I didn't think I was gonna love it, and I was taught it by by an 83 year old man at our game group, love named Marty, Marty who that. loves train games. He does. Um, and uh, it's just a really fun wow. game where you have. I, I've just played the the normal base one, so it's in the eastern half of the U S. Yeah. And well, um, you're trying to like connect cities and then deliver goods around um so you're spending money and stuff to like lay track out from you know chicago to des moines or wherever new york you know what i mean and then you have different color cities certain ones are red and blue and such and those ones need that color cube to come to that city okay so you're trying to ultimately build out these railways and upgrade your engine so you can deliver things further so you get more money and more points and there's this kind of ramp up effect as you score points you make more and more money every turn to a point and then you get to get to the point where, you know, you're still scoring points, but you start making less and less money. Okay. Um, so there's a little bit to consider there. And basically the way the game ends is once you've depleted a city of its all of its resources, it becomes like a ghost town. And then once you go through X amount of ghost towns that, that scales for a player count, the game is over. So it's just okay. this interesting game of like laying out routes uh, and then delivering goods. And it's like, in many ways, just kind of like a classic, like, that was what you expect yeah. to have a train game, but I really enjoyed it, man. Yeah. Okay, so cool. that's it. I really want to try it because, yeah. you know, you, you kind of got sucked into the game because Marty really wanted to play it. And yeah. we kind of were like, all right. And you you were kind of like, it was like, who's, who's taking this hit? Yeah. Because, you know, there's a couple times we, we play games because, like, other people want to play them. Like, all right, I'm probably yeah. not going to enjoy this, whatever. Yeah. And you really liked it, you know, and, and I'll, I'm, I'm very intrigued. My number 46 is of a similar weight, and that is Azul. <laughs> um, same type of game Azul man. is a great abstract strategy game again never gonna get off the soapbox abstract strategy game should be pretty Pow. Azul is very pretty Azul is a game if you don't know I'm sure you know what it is but Azul is a game where you are in Portugal and you're making tiled walls yeah ultimately the theme means nothing but yeah these great starburst pieces that you play with delicious and there's a, a, a big factory, all these factory tiles, and there's a bunch of different tiles out there and you're drafting tiles and you have to take all tiles of one color so if there's like Two reds, a blue, and then a black one on this one. And you want the reds. You take the two reds, and the other two go in the middle. And you can also take them from the middle. And then you put them on your little schematic thing over here. And I'm not going to get too much into it. But it's it's a little puzzle game, and you're drafting. Mm-hmm. You're trying to get what you need and trying to deny other people what they need. And it's just it's tough and pretty thinky. And it's yeah. just a great, great little abstract strategy game that tends to do very, very well. I've never really had to go badly. It just slays. Azul is great. It's wonderful. I love it. Um, and I'm glad it's had all the success it, it gets because, in my opinion, it, it's totally deserved. Absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. love Azul for sure. Yeah, love it to death. Azul, that's all I need to say. I'm done. Boom. Let's get into 45 then. Let's do it. My number 45 was something that Mike mentioned on his list last time, and that is a game where the world is just too darn small. So, small World is my number 45. I love Small World. We talked about it last time. It's just a great area control game where, like a lot of area control games, you're fighting and you're pushing people out and you're getting people out of the way. 
And the problem with area control is it can feel sometimes kind of personal. It can feel mean. But this game just doesn't feel that way. It feels very mm -hmm. impersonal and it's just fun. Yeah. And one thing I love about it is you cannot turtle in the game because I hate area control games where you can turtle. And to my opinion, it just breaks every area control game that does that to the point where I'm like, I refuse to play this because this isn't fun. You know, it's like and you can't turtle because you get points for however many uh, areas you control at the end yeah, of the game. So you, need, spread out. you need to spread out. And it's just great having the different um, abilities paired up with a race randomly, so you never really know what you're going to get. It's just great. I'm not going to go into it a ton again, but it's a wonderful, wonderful Days of Wonder game. If you haven't tried it, if you like area control, you got to give it a shot. Yeah. It's wonderful. I love it to death. Um, yeah, that's it. Small world. I'm done. I'm done right talking on. about it. I love it. My number 45 is a super fun racing game uh, that is just fun and quick it doesn't say i'll say it's welcome and it can play up to six players it's downforce love five downforce. restoration games love downforce. um it's just so cool man because i just love the fact that basically everyone gets a, a certain amount of cards like you just pass them around evenly um and you're just trying to race your car across the finish line but it doesn't matter necessarily if you win the race it helps yeah. Because ultimately, you're just trying to make that money. You're trying to get that skrill. Yeah. So it has this addition of three points in the game where you bet on who you think is going to win, whether or not that's your car. You can bet on anybody. So if you've got like these cards that help you move your car kind of, but they also have other colors and you're really going to help orange move, yeah. you might bet on orange and be like, well, I'm going to make sure they get across the line and I'm going to try to hopefully come in first yeah, or second totally. as well. And, and you know what I mean? like And just try to make the most money I can. So you form these like sort of shaky alliances. Yeah. Where you're like, dude, come on. Like there's these battle neck points. You're like, get me through first because then you're going to be able to move through. Yeah. If, if you don't move me right now, everyone's going to get stuck, including you, man. Yeah. You help me. I'll help you in the future. And it's ultimately a really quick game that has this cool, like uh bidding mechanism at the beginning for which car you want. You get a simple little power and then you just race. And like yeah. the game is, I don't know, 20 minutes? Uh, no, I think more than At least half hour, I'd say. All told? I think it feels mm. I think it feels faster than it is. It's not 20 minutes. I think it's no closer to 20 than 30. No, I don't think so. But I, we'll, it's, we'll time it sometime. I'm not sure. It's quick either way. No, for it's sure. It's quick to teach and quick to play. Yeah. Uh, and it, it just like, there are racing games that get more into like the weeds about like the physics of it all. Yeah. Which is like cool. This one just like, it keeps it light and breezy. It's yeah. just like, just race around and, and try to be the first and also make cool bets and stuff and see if you can go like all in on yourself and win. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Downforce is just super yeah. fun. It's and great. I love that it can play up to six and it plays it quickly because when you're playing cards, you're going to be moving all the cars around, not yeah. just you. Yeah. So it makes the game keep moving totally, forward. Totally. Yeah. So it's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. Love downforce for sure. It's awesome. It's great. All right, those was our number 45s. Let's move on to 44. Let's rip it. Rip it and rip it. 44. <laughs> 44. Now that we're all buttered up, this is 44, Mike. There's just no movement in the oh, I know. heart. I'm all clogged. I love all it. All clogged. My number four, speaking of clogs, is uh, talking about clogged forest towns uh, or something in Everdell. Everdell's <laughs> my 44. Cool. Because you build out a town of Tableau, and maybe it's like the woodland creatures are feeling crowded in. Sure. I don't know. <laughs> it's a game all about... Um, Building a, a little woodland town for yourself yeah. that's full of different types of buildings and different types of critters that like to live in those buildings. Uh, and so it's a really cool kind of worker placement. I call it like worker placement light because it's like half of it is the idea of like tableau building and playing these cards. And then the other half is kind of using your workers to gain materials to help build buildings and stuff. But really, for me at least, the focus is all on the cards. How can I be mo the most efficient yeah, possible with these cards? Because they have uh, all these buildings, and every building will have a critter that's sort of attached to them. And if you build that building, 
and then you have the critter that's attached to it, you can play the critter for free. Mm -hmm. So you save resources and stuff. And a lot of it comes down to how can I combo these cards together? And it has a really cool 3D tree that's just for table presence, and I really appreciate it. Um, and it's just fun and light and really beautiful art. The art's really amazing. Um, and I just can't say enough about it. It's just like... It's a showstopper. Yeah, yeah, it's a showstopper, man. It's really fun. It's always gone down well. People love it. At Game Group, we talked to a few people, and there's people who play that every yeah. every game group we have. Yeah, there's one guy in particular that. who plays it every single time. Yeah, he just grabs it first. And, and now he just playing, teaches it to everyone else, yeah. and it's great. You it's know, great. like It's just been exciting seeing a game that like people have really gravitated to and to the point where like we haven't played it in quite a while at yeah. Game Group because it's always taken up. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, oh, it's, that's it's, really... We're like, all right, cool. I guess we're playing something else. Yeah, it's really <laughs> exciting, but like the cards and the art and stuff are fun. It's just really fun to explore and get more and more familiar with the types of buildings and critters yeah. and how to use them. And in, in the last couple of games I've played, I've started using cards that before I'm like, ah, I don't want to think about that. I'm going to dis discard it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. Like, anyway, Everdell is just like a beautiful, fun game that's like actually not super heavy. No. Um, but there is kind of a lot that you can think about yeah, and, yeah, and no, get in. Great. So it kind of appeals to lots of different people. It is types like a, a bit above gateway level, but like it's. Pretty a, ton. a lot of people can handle it. I mean, a lot yeah. of new gamers can handle it. Yeah. So cool. Love, love it. 44. Love it. Love it. Love it. My Forty Four is a game where I'm kind of like, it's got a really weird theme, but it's also one that I'm like, how has no one thought of this? It's kind of like this microwave hot topper brush. I'm just like, how right. has no one done this yet? Right. And, and that um, number forty four is role player, because okay. nerds are nerds. So you're saying you're instead nerds, of a brush, I'm not. They should have had a roll system for butter, like a roll. No, they just how has no one thought of this yet? You know, the brush, you know, the, the hot topper brush. When was this made? And so, oh God, I don't even know, dude. Um, it was probably a bad idea to put that on food. Um, <laughs> so, but role player is a game. We might talk about it in a list or two I ago. I can't quite remember. <clears throat> but um, it's a game where you are essentially rolling out a D&D &D character because board gamers are freaking nerds. Nerds. And you know who else are nerds? D&D &D players. And I love it because I'm one of them. It's great. I love being a nerd. But I love that idea of you're just rolling out a character, and that's it. Yeah. And then, like, none of the other stuff happens. You're just rolling out a character. And it's a stats. great, thinky game that is it, – uh, oh, it's just so cool. It's, it's so puzzle. awesome, and it's it, and it's great. And then with the Monsters and Minion expansions, it makes it even better. Role player is a great, great game. Uh, uh, try it out if you haven't, especially if you want, like, something like Sagrada, but something that's heavier than Sagrada. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, they're not exactly the same, but they have some similarities and stuff um, to where they get compared constantly. It's just, uh, I love it. I love it to death. Role player is a great, great game with a wonderful theme. Um, dual sided cards, so they have a male and female side, which is very important um, and is awesome. And I just love it. Role player is awesome. Great, great stuff. 44. Wow. Let's get a 43 then, man. Woo! Don't use that product. No. It'll kill you. Very likely. Don't. <laughs> Four. All righty, number 43. Number 43 is a great, great game that we got. Uh, our, our friend Crookie had it and played it. And it's a game that I literally didn't take one look at beforehand. But he really liked it and wanted to try it. And that is a game called The Quest for El Dorado. Oh. Quest for El Dorado is such a good game. Uh, it's a Ryder Canizia game. And you are trying to find El Dorado. And you are bushwhacking through the jungle or running across the markets or, or you know canoeing across the oceans or whatever but essentially it's a race game and you're trying to be the first one to go to El Dorado and it's a great like um it's a great great uh what's wrong with you huh what happened are you okay oh man the existential dread just sank into me for a minute It's a great like intro a deck builder because there's a deck building element and that is how you get around. So you have a hand of cards and the card might be like a, a, a have the jungle three and that means you can go through like three jungle spaces and some jungle spaces are and harder machetes. to get to. Yeah, and machetes. You're like macheteing your way through the, wagon. Yeah, through the forest and stuff. And it's just so much fun and it's super light and the board is giant like these are they're really big. It's actually got a bit too much table presence it's very large <laughs> it's a bit of a how these big hex boards and they can turn and stuff and there's a bunch of different configurations in the rule book of like harder ones and easier ones or you could like do what we do sometimes which is we just like throw them and spin them and however they land that's kind of how we Usually make our fine and one time we went through like a gauntlet it, it was, was impossible harsh. it was great there's a new expansion <sighs> that's just being released now we haven't tried it we don't have it. i want it so badly but it is a great great light um gateway game really 
with uh, uh, racing and deck building. It's just, oh, I love it. No, don't let it, don't take you. Oh, God, you. save me, man. Yeah, go. <laughs> Do your 43. You're good. Okay, uh, so my 43 uh, is, is I was just thinking about how animals get put in cages sometimes. And sometimes those animals are monsters. And so I just want to be a dungeon lord helping out my dungeon pets. 43. Nice segue. Bow. Uh, dungeon Pets is my 43. It's a fantastic it is. worker placement game uh, where you are going around a town um, uh, basically getting and raising monsters. Yeah. So these monsters need certain things. Some of them like to eat a lot. Some of them like to fight a lot. Some of them are magical. Some like to play. And you need to make sure their needs are met so you raise happy, healthy creatures, monsters. I there's something else they could do. Well, they can poop a lot. Oh, they poop. That's yeah, right. They poop a lot. Poop, poop is a big factor. And that in this was game. a selling point on this game. Nick told me there's a game, there's monsters, they poop. And I said, let's play it right now. It, that's actually very true. He did say I that. I was just like, that's amazing. That's so magical. That makes me so happy to know. And I love that part of the game. Oh, it's the best. To this day, there's yeah. animals that poop. And if there's a lot of poop in the cage, they're not going to be very happy. They might get sick. So there's something you got to take care of. You need a minion that's going to clean that poop. All right, you need to play with those those monsters and keep them happy, so you can hopefully sell them to nice people who want to have you know these very specific pets. Some people like animals that are just angry. They're just like, I want an angry beast. That's true. You're like, oh, here's an angry one. This one's really mad all the yeah. time. Uh, and so you're getting different cages and upgrades for your cages, different monsters, food. You got to make sure they're fed. There's all these little elements to make sure you're raising your people, and it's just like such a cute amazing theme. Yeah, you know, it's like you could do it like as in a dog shop, like a real life. Yeah, and they make them like these beautiful cute creatures yeah and so it's this like hilarious theme that like actually covers a, a pretty heavy, heavy game. game yeah 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 and one that's just really fun i've always enjoyed it i love the theme the theme is an absolute just like seller for me on it uh yeah dungeon pets is just fantastic worker placement fun we love worker placement so it's going to be a win nice. and like literally i was sold on the poop and i've right. not regretted playing that game not one time because the poop is always there and it's great yeah, poop monsters. Come on, it's great. Poop monsters. Dungeon pass. My forty-three. All right, forty-three. Let's move on. Forty-two. Let's get it. I'm doing this too fast. Forty-two. So our number forty-two is brought to you by that mess of wires that's yeah. under everyone's computer or behind everyone's TV. People don't realize it's a corporation behind that. Yeah, yeah. There's actually, you know, it's like you can get zip ties and things like that, but just there's there's people that come in at night to retangle yeah, everything. It's a, it's a thriving it's, market. It's a real aesthetic we're going for. Yeah. So this is brought to you by that because there just seems to be no solution to no. all of the wires all over the place in everyone's homes. Yeah. There we go. It's terrible. It's just terrible. It's a terrible. Terrible problem. But you know what's not what? terrible, dude? Speaking of monsters, sometimes monsters like to read. Sometimes monsters like to visit the library. Ooh. Uh, my number 42 is Ex Libris. Great game. It's a fantastic game uh, in which placement. you are worker placement, baby. Worker placement and monsters. Give me worker placement and monsters. <laughs> it's true. It's true. All right, so it's a worker placement game uh, where you're building out a library and you're trying to organize various books of shelves. Yeah. Or shelves of books, rather. Um, books of shelves. And you're trying to put them all in alphabetical order. And have it all be sensible. And there's different types of books. There's like historical books and there's like spell books and monster manuals and things like that. And you're going to score points for different types of, of books that you have. You might be trying to go for a really specific type of book. Uh, so you're going to try to collect a bunch of those. And you just have to make this kind of puzzle in front of you that makes sense. You have to have everything in alphabetical order. You want a nice orderly library. And there's uh, different locations that come out throughout the game. Some yeah. are temporary, some become permanent that you can go to to get more cards, to shelve books and things like that. It's just an interesting game with the kind of revolving locations, yeah. uh, the types of spots that are available to visit. Um, and then like little player powers you get that just keep the game really playable. Yeah, um, totally. I love it. Yeah. yeah, I just love it. Love the idea of it. And again, what a theme it's like on paper before you have the monsters you're like you ever want to you ever really want to get into the dewey decibel system yeah right you're like no not really. it's like what if you're what if you're a mummy right like, yes i do definitely more so but keep yeah, talking. Now, yes. yeah now now you're speaking my language and it's just like a game that totally works yeah. like organizing your library totally. and it's it's really thinky because you want to get these types of books but there's always banned books you don't want to get those books yes. And then you want to have like a good variety of books because there's that helps you score in the end. And there's just all these things to think yeah. about. And it just kind of breaks my brain a little bit. Yeah. But I love it. Ex Libris 42. Nick. All right. My number 42 is Root. 
Root. Let's get right into it. Root. 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 Root is a, a kind of a spiritual successor to a game called Vast by Leader Games, and yeah. it's a super asymmetrical game. This is a game where you are woodland creatures trying to take over a forest, but depending on which faction you're playing, you're playing an entirely different game with a totally different win condition. Yeah. Well, I guess all the conditions are the same because you're trying you to score to that points, many points. But how you score is different. Exactly. So you could be the cats. The cats have complete control of the force. They've come in and all they're trying to do is trying to build their buildings. I'm trying to build the sawmill, mill, I'm trying to build this, I'm trying to do this. Then you have the birds. They used to rule the force, but the cats kicked them out. So the birds are like super bloodlusty and just like, we must fight. <laughs> but they also like don't know who's in charge. Yeah, so, so they're, they're like, super, who's leading this faction? They're <laughs> super fickle. And then you have the Woodland Alliance who are like the people in the shadow, like the guerrilla warriors. Yeah. And they're like, they're like whispering and gathering, gathering uh like intelligence and gathering gathering troops around and then they come up and like da, 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 and they go back down and there's a vagabond which isn't even a faction it's just one character and they're just like running around like stealing stuff and like stabbing people and stuff and, just doing it, but, like, and it's just, just their own thing super asymmetric and like i haven't even played all the roles and we haven't even explored this game anywhere near what it can be explored yeah. to and i still love it this much we've played it a number of times but it's just i'm like so much I'm, like it's going to take so many plays just to get a faction really explored. And then you can yeah. move on to another faction. And then there's an expansion with two more factions. Root is great. If you like the asymmetrical nature of something like Vast, pick up Root. It's awesome. I love it, love it, love it. Root is great. 42. Nailed it. Good on you, man. Let's go into 41. <laughs> Alrighty, last one for this list, 41. And number 41, Mike, is brought to us by Big Orange Levels. Wow, that is longer than this screen, man. That's this a is level. a large orange level. You know, this is this is the typical Home Depot level you get. It's bright Home Depot orange. Speaking of Home Depot, it's brought to you by Home Depot. Right here. It's brought to you by all things that are orange and also have to do with construction. Indeed. This is a level great. You know, you, you know what the biggest problem with levels, Mike, is losing them. Yeah. You know, you get up they in the wall and you're like, I can't see where the level is. I don't this, know what's level. No problem. No problem. Let's see if this Game Topper's level, Mike. Dude, you know Game what? LLC Perfectly lays level. on the level. Perfectly level. Right here. Big orange levels, great times. But let's get into 41 because you know it is level? My 41 probably. I don't know what it is. Hold on. Yes. You know it's very, very level and very rational? What? The um, high, high-end French people. Oh, Yeah. They're on sure. the level. They're on the level, exactly. My number 41 is High Society. High yes. Society, you talked about it a number of lists ago. But it's a great little bidding game where you are French people and you are bidding on fancy French I would French like things. to have your horse, please. On the yeah, I would like it. You give it to me. But I'm sorry, French people. Um, you went, so, you, went, <laughs> you went a little Randy Newman on that. <laughs> like, give it to me. Star Wars. Um... And so High Side is a bidding game by Reiner Knizia, and um, you are essentially bidding on certain things. So these card, a card gets put out, it could be like perfume, or you know, um, and so everyone has a certain amount of money, everyone has the same amount of money, and you're essentially bidding, and you're bidding, and you put out like 2,000 francs, and then Mike puts out like 4,000 francs, and we just keep going around until someone wins the bid. Yeah. And then whoever wins the bid loses their money, everyone else takes their money back. Yeah. And then you just keep bidding, and all these cards are worth certain points. There's certain cards that are negative points. There's certain cards that will half your total amount of points. Yep. There's certain cards that will double your total amount of points. But the real catch is at the end of the game, whoever has the least amount of money loses. Straight up loses, yep. cannot win. And then from everyone else, whoever has the most money or whoever has the most points is the one who yes. wins. So you want to live a really fancy life, but you don't want to become too poor. Exactly, because that's one of the things that if you if you if you go all out and win everything you're probably going to lose anyway and so it's this weird balance and it's just absolutely so fun it's one of my favorite fillers um at this point because it's just you end up getting this giggly mood you know we played like i think you talked about we played like at like one o'clock in the morning at MeepleCon last year with crystal paisano and z z garcia and we were sitting there playing this game and this is not like an inherently like funny game and we were dying laughing because oh, we were all just like I would beat 20,000 francs, 20,000 francs. And just like, it was just all sorts of weird. I love this game though. It's great. Yeah, I love High Society. 41. 
fantastic auctioning game. My number 41 has been mentioned by you before. It's an abstract strategy game that's beautiful, beautiful. It is Azul. Oh, okay, I think it might be a little higher. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, but it's it's really great, I mean, man. It's great. You know, it's, it's just fantastic. All things Nick was saying about it's kind of, you know, you have all these factory tiles and you can get all of one type. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, man. My head is not flat. No, that's a level-headed choice. <laughs> oh, Azul is a great game, folks. You choose, uh, you choose tiles and the color you want to hopefully fill out this kind of like Mario walking up the steps to the castle. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. Thing to then bring them over to the scoring portion of the board and score points and make just it just make beauty happen, man. Make beauty. Those happen. tiles it are is very so pretty. delicious looking. They don't taste nearly as good, but they got a great crunch. Um, and, uh, yeah, Azul's just, it's just fantastic. It's fun, light, you can play with anybody at any time. Uh, so it's perfect for a game night filler. It's perfect to bring home for the family around the holidays and stuff. Bring Azul with you because it's something that, that pretty much anyone can get into. Uh, it just looks good and you can kind of chat while you play. That's the thing yeah, I also totally. like. It's like, yeah, you want to think about what you're doing, but like, the it's stakes, not like, the stakes aren't particularly Like chess high. where everyone's just like, I'm 10 moves into the future, but I'm talking about this turn now. You know, and you're like, okay. Uh, it's just a little more like straightforward than that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's my number 41 is Azul, folks. Boom. That's it. And that is the end of this list. That's all I got. All right. 41. That's 50 to 41. We are moving into the up and up and up. Next list is going to be 40 to 31. Dang. Wow. That's how numbers work. All righty. <gasps> Shall we do it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Right now? No, not right now. Okay. Well, we, we gotta well, leave. We gotta tell people about our YouTube channel and our Twitch channel, which you go check out. The Brothers Murph everywhere. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. It helps us out a lot. Check us out on Twitch if you want to come see us play stuff live, and you can play games with us. All those rolling rice Nick was talking about. We do all those live with the chat. You can play right there from home. It's really fun. So give us a follow on Twitch. Subscribe to us on YouTube and follow our social media to find out what's going on and when. Indeed. We'll see you in the next video, folks. Coming at you. Bye. Hot two.